Hey there, welcome to the Master Your Metabolism mini workshop. I'm gonna to try to keep this really short and sweet so you can just get the most value in the least amount of time. Uh, it's gonna be about 15 minutes and at the end you will get a free gift that will help you really understand what steps you need to take to start improving your metabolism. Most likely you are here because you feel like your metabolism has slowed down and you are wondering what can I do to improve it? You're probably also tired of these quick fix diets and you're probably ready for something that is a little bit more sustainable, that fits into your lifestyle, that isn't so strict and rigid and feels like you're following rules because that's not fun. <laughs> you probably also are interested in feeling more in control of your mood and emotions. This is something I hear from a lot of my clients and I'm sure that you are ready to actually support your metabolism at the root cause as well as supporting your hormones. Finally, I know that you want to feel energized and really feel good in your body again, most importantly. So let's hop into it. What is today gonna look like? Today's roadmap, uh, we are gonna learn why counting calories, diet plans, and weight loss programs are not sustainable and how to actually get sustainable results. We're also gonna talk about how to actually improve your metabolism long-term by getting to the root cause and what those root causes actually are. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you a free gift that will help you improve your metabolism and support your hormones. This will be really more individualized support for you. And then we'll talk about the next steps. Before we jump right into it, real quick introduction in case you don't know me or we haven't talked before. My name's Nicole Broers. Uh, on Instagram, I'm at Dance to the Beat. Website's dance to the beat.com. I am a health coach that specializes in supporting women's hormones and metabolism. I'm also a certified nutritionist and herbalist. And I also wanted to let you know that I have been there. You know, I have struggled for years trying to get that number on the scale to move just by working out more, eating less, like doing detox programs, doing all the crazy things, just skipping meals. Um, but once I started to learn about like my hormones and my digestion and how it all kind of worked together, and I started actually focusing on that, not only did I feel much more in control of my weight, but I also felt less bloated and I had more energy and my mental health improved. I felt less anxious. And I'm saying this because I want you to know that like, I know what it feels like to be there. And it's really frustrating <laughs> to just feel like we're trying and doing all the right things and nothing is working. And I am so passionate about teaching people, teaching women like you, how our bodies work and how we can really feel empowered and in control and just really feel good again. So let's get into the good part. What's the problem with like diets and plans and kind of these programs that were meant to, for everyone to kind of like follow this same, these same rules. So number one, they are not sustainable. You know, what happens when we have a barbecue or we go out to eat or we just live our life, you know, they don't necessarily take our lifestyle or our individual, you know, life into consideration. And so that means they're not really going to work long-term because if we feel like we can't do all these things or we can't fit into the plan while we do all these things, then that's not sustainable. And if it's not sustainable, I'm going to tell you this, like it doesn't work. If it doesn't work long-term, it doesn't work. So the next problem that I have with this is that they're just really, some of these are just focused on weight loss. And when we're just focused on weight loss and not actually supporting our metabolism at the root cause and not taking our hormones into consideration, we may be actually doing things that damage our hormones long-term. And this might not also, this might also not just work, but it also might just lead down the line to us just not feeling very good, you know, us not sleeping very good, us not feeling in control of our weight because our hormones are really, really powerful. So I don't like any plan that doesn't take hormones in consideration and doesn't even pay attention to our gut health or anything like that. The final problem that I have kind of with diets and plans is that a lot of these don't really teach you, you know, what's going on in our body. They're not teaching you how something works. They're giving you the fish, but they're not teaching you to fish, you know? And I feel like that leaves us just feeling very reliable on these plans. And then when we're not on it, you know, what do we do? You know, we don't, we don't know what to do. We go back to how we were doing things before that wasn't working, or we try to do this thing that's not sustainable. And I'm a really big fan of feeling empowered and feeling empowered with what we're doing with the knowledge and understanding. And I think that that's a really big component. And so that's why a lot of the diets and plans that are out there, I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> now I want to talk about counting calories and the problem that I have with counting calories and why this doesn't always work either. Number one, 
Food is information. So food is not just calories. There is a lot of other things going on. You know, there's the nutrients and the phytonutrients and the minerals and all of those things. There's all of these things that are in this food. And the interesting thing is that some foods actually contain things that will tell us that we're full. Some will tell us to keep eating. Some contain things that interfere with our hormones and some actually support our hormones. Some foods are not good for our gut health and some foods are amazing for our gut health. And all of those things influence how well our metabolism works. (laughs) And those are things besides calories. The other problem that I have with the calorie counting model is that it doesn't really take into consideration the thing between the calories in and the calories out. So when calories come in and they go out, there's this thing in between called the metabolism. And that is how efficiently we actually burn these calories, how efficiently we actually use our food for fuel. And our metabolism is influenced by all types of things. And when it's working efficiently, we might be able to eat 2000 calories and not gain weight. And when it's not working efficiently, we might only be eating 1400 calories and still gaining weight. So rather than just trying to eat less, let's heal that, you know, mechanism. Let's not just focus on calories. Let's heal that mechanism between the calories in and the calories out. The other problem that I have with counting calories is that it doesn't take into consideration our hormones or our gut health. So besides just, you know, calories, we really need to eat things that, as I mentioned, are really supporting our hormones, really supporting our gut health, because these things are so closely tied with how well our metabolism works. And the final problem that I have with counting calories is that we're not listening to our bodies. It's not teaching us to listen to our bodies. It's teaching us to eat based on these mathematical equations rather than really listening to our own hunger signals or learning to read, you know, what those signals might mean when we feel a certain way after we eat. And I think that that's really one of the biggest problems because I think our bodies have this beautiful innate intelligence and we just need to learn to listen to it rather than having to follow a math equation. Now that you know what doesn't really work for us long-term, let's talk about how to actually improve your metabolism long-term. And what we're going to do is get to the root cause. When I say root cause, these are the things that affect our metabolism as well as everything else in the body. So I want to take a minute and look at this crazy little thing that I have going on here. Um, I know it looks a little bit overwhelming, so let's break this down. Look at the bottom where it says root causes in pink. These are the five root causes that really affect everything else in the body. So you'll see everything above there. We have, you know, things like PMS where, or PCOS or even uh, endometriosis, all of these things, those are affected by our sex hormones, right? Well, our sex hormones are also affected by our liver health and the micronutrients and our stress and our gut health and everything else. So we really need to focus on those root causes at the bottom if we want to improve anything at the top. And the great thing about that is as we, you know, improve gut health, we will improve our thyroid hormones. We will improve our anxiety. We may improve our sleep issues. We may improve our skin health. Our energy will improve. So as we focus on these root causes, all of those things at the top will get better. Rather than trying to see all those things at the top as like individual issues that we need to work on, if we just focus on these five root causes, these affect all of these other things at the top, as well as, you know, when we think of like weight gain and fat loss and things like that in our metabolism, these five things are what we really need to focus on. So now you know the five root causes, basically those root causes are the five steps that we need to take to improve our metabolism. So number one, we want to balance blood sugar and get the right macronutrients. And what I mean by this is our proteins, our fats, our carbs. These are the nutrients we need in big amounts. And we need these at certain amounts. Yes, we need all of them. (laughs) Not no fat, not no carbs. Like we need all of them in certain amounts at certain times. So understanding what we need to do and getting the right ones to keep our blood sugar balanced is really, really important. As you saw, it affects everything else in the body. Number two, we want to create a healthy gut. This is so important because our gut bacteria actually have a direct effect on our weight. <laughs> They're doing some really cool studies now, kind of looking at different gut bacteria and uh, you know people that are either gaining or losing weight. Our gut is also so imperative for us to actually absorb the nutrients. So it's not just about what we're eating, but also how well we're absorbing it. If our gut isn't working optimally, we might not be absorbing all those nutrients that we're eating. So gut health is really important for that. 
And our gut also converts some of our thyroid hormones. And this is really important to know because our thyroid is kind of the basis of how our metabolism is working and how well it's functioning. And it's kind of affected by everything and everything affects it. So some of our thyroid hormones are converted in the gut. So if we want to improve our metabolism, got to look at gut health. The third step that we want to do is we want to manage or minimize stress because our bodies will always put all of our energy and all of our resources towards our stress hormones first, because our stress hormones are what are going to keep us safe and from dying if there is a lion chasing us. <laughs> and I know there's not lions chasing us these days, but there are lions in our heads. There's work deadlines, there's kids, there's all of the other things that weigh on us and that cause stress. And when these stress hormones kind of get out of control because they are a survival mechanism, they will drain a lot of our resources, a lot of our nutrients, um, in addition, they kind of interfere with everything. So stress interferes with thyroid hormone conversion and it interferes with, you know, like our estrogen and progesterone ratios. And so it's really, really important to get stress under control. I can't stress this enough, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> the fourth step that we need to take is to support the liver and minimize toxins. Um, as I've mentioned the thyroid a couple times, our, most of our thyroid hormones are actually converted in the liver. So having a really healthy liver is really important. And our liver is actually our biggest internal organ, which means it has a lot of jobs. So it helps support healthy bowel movements. It helps filter out excess estrogen throughout our cycles. Um, it affects our skin and our energy and our sleep. So making sure that we're kind of minimizing the load on this and doing the things that we can to improve liver health is a really important step to improving our metabolism as well. Number five is to get essential micronutrients. So what I mean by micronutrients are vitamins and minerals, these things we need in very small quantities. And you know, certain vitamins and certain minerals are needed for sleep or mental health or energy or skin or hair, brain function, uh, hormone creation, you know, all of these things, these vitamins and minerals act as little like catalysts in their bodies for all of these things to happen. So it's important that we are getting these from our foods, mostly supplements if needed, but getting these micronutrients that are essential, you know, like for instance, like selenium is essential for thyroid hormone conversion. So we need to make sure that we're getting these nutrients that are needed for our, you know, hormones and our metabolism to function correctly. And <laughs> so those are the five steps to creating a healthy metabolism. So now you've got these five steps and you might be wondering like, okay, that's a lot. <laughs> Where do I start? So I talked in the beginning about a free gift and I have actually already sent this free gift to you. It is in your email. It is a metabolic checklist. And what this checklist does is it allows you to kind of go through and figure out what is going on for you individually. And then it will give you indicators of kind of where there might be a hormone imbalance or where, you know, if you have a lot of things checked in a certain section, where you need to focus your efforts and what you need to do for that. So you'll know the areas that are going to be most important for you to start getting results and start improving your metabolism. So this video is done in just a few seconds. <laughs> Go ahead and check your email, grab that checklist. Go through that and then once you kind of get more insight as to what's going on for you, if you want to talk about that in a little bit more detail, then I wanted to let you know that I do have some time booked off over the next few weeks for a free metabolic breakthrough session. And these are 45 minute sessions where me and you will talk one on one. We'll start making connections. I will start giving you some insight as to kind of what's going on in your body, as well as the first actionable step that you can take to get results. And then we'll also lay out a path and a plan for you moving forward. And as we talk, if it feels aligned and you feel like you need more support, then we will definitely, you know, talk about how I can support you through my coaching or any kind of program. Um, if not, then no worries. You will still get a lot of great insight as to what's going on for you and the best path for you moving forward. So if you want to be ambitious and go ahead and book that session now, I would love to talk to you. There's a link for that below. You will also get a link to book this in the email that I sent with the metabolic checklist. And I would really love, you know, just to see who's on the other side of the screen and really connect with you more and kind of get more insight as to what's going on for y'all. I also hope that throughout this video and throughout this little mini training that you really understand why these kind of old ideas about, you know, weight loss and our metabolism and what we need to be doing are kind of outdated and don't really work for us long term and that the path to really get true sustainable results is to really focus on you know healing the hormones and healing the metabolism 
at the root cause and focusing on those five steps because honestly, that is really what's going to help us truly feel good in our bodies again. And I think that's what we all want, right? (laughs) 